Martin Garrix, it has been way too long. I think the last time we had a chance to catch up was in Vegas really quickly during the pandemic. You are about to go on during a pool party, and we got the chance to catch up thanks to our good friend, Carrie Vance. So it's good seeing you again. Good seeing you, too. Vegas was fun. I remember we were all behind me in the booth. We had a good time. It really was a good time. Now, most importantly, though, how have you been? I've been good. been touring like a maniac. Um, spent a lot of time in the studio working on the music. And I'm good. I have three days off now where I'm chilling, I'm snowboarding, skiing a bit. And then I go back into the studio for a week on Thursday. Well, welcome to America's Dance 30 for the first time. Thank you for spending some time with us during your time off. Thank you for having me. Congratulations on Real Love with Loiso going number one. It has been way too long since we've seen Martin Garrix at the top of the chart. So congratulations. Thanks so much. I'm very, uh, very grateful. Very excited. Can't wait to talk all about Real Love and find out how this song was born with Loiso. But since this is your first time on America's Dance 30, let's get to know Martin Garrix a little better with Finky's Firsts. Perfect. So I always love finding out the origin story of artists. Now, your origin story is well documented because (laughs) you're an anomaly. You made it at such a young age. But before you started producing at such a young age, do you remember if music was the first thing you wanted to get into or was there something else? Um, For me, it's always been music. But the reason why I got into music was not because I had any idea I could turn into a career, but just simply because it gave me so much joy. Like it was, it was almost meditative. I, I started playing the guitar um, when I was very young. And for me, it was just fun, like, uh, like playing existing songs, messing around, writing, writing new stuff. Um, and also it brought the family together. Like my sister played the violin, my par- my parents, my father played um, guitar, my mother played piano. We would sing songs together. So it, like it was very, uh, very present uh, growing up. Well, thank God you were able to turn it into a career. (laughs) (laughs) Now, do you remember the first show you ever did? Um, I would do like, I had like a drive-in type of thing where I would go to like weddings and like school parties. And it's not really a show. I I would do more like background music or like song requests, but I would facilitate the music for for whatever party slash events. Um, And my my DJ name was DJ Marty. uh, (laughs) The slogan was party with DJ Marty. Oh my God! Did you have a banner that you would put up as well? Yeah, yeah, it's on, it's on the, it's on Google. That is amazing! Oh my God! Yeah. Now that's when you were doing like hip hop in open format, right? Every everything. Like uh, I was listening a lot to hardstyle. Um, I got into trans music because of Chesto um, in two thousand four. Uh, he played the Olympics, which was for me like crazy. Um, and I I I love the music. I love. I love electronic music. It's you don't need lyrics to feel it and to understand it. So for me, it was it was magic. Like you couldn't see it, but everybody, it, and it brought people together. And I know I just it, it got me very excited to start messing around um, and having fun in the studio, trying to make my own stuff, and also collaborating. I learned a lot from working with others, and then I got signed very young um, to Chester's label, which was crazy because I started listening to electronic music because of him, and he's been. Basically, since I was 15, he's been like mentoring, guiding me through this crazy world. Do you remember the first time you told Tiesto how important he was to you? Yeah, I remember FaceTime. Sorry, it was not FaceTime. It was um, Skype. And I remember I was walking through the house because I was too nervous to sit at one spot. And my hands were shaking while I was holding the laptop. And um, he was actually the first person who I sent animals to. And he was like... um, Marty, this is crazy. Can I play it live? I was like, please play it live. <laughs> <laughs> no, Tiesto, you can't. <laughs> um, and, no, and he's been like music-wise, career-wise, but also like mentally, like he's been really um, just guiding me for the last uh, 12 years. Well, speaking of animals, congratulations on the 10-year anniversary of it. That is so incredible. Do you remember back when you were producing it 
how many versions there were of it before you released it? It's actually crazy because the break melody, the dun, 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 um, it was already two years older than when Animals got released. It was a, it was a, it was an old idea on my old computer, and then one day I went through uh, songs like uh, stuff that I made, and I remember being that night in my bed, and the melody was stuck in my head. I was like, "Wow, it's catchy. I should do something with this." And then after a night of partying, I came home, uh, and I came up with the uh, with the drop. Um, not thinking anything of it. I was just like, oh, I'm excited to play this at like the weddings, at the, at the school parties. Um, and then a lot of DJs started playing it and then it got picked up on radio. Also, thanks to you guys. Um, it, it, it really, um, it was everywhere, you know, and it was crazy because it was an instrumental song. So I made it for the clubs just for people to dance on and to, to play at my mini shows. Um, and then it, it did the whole crossover to radio, which was crazy because I, I was 16. And it's so crazy that I remember our station here locally was playing it during normal format, which is nuts because it is such yeah. an instrumental song. It was crazy. They told me that uh, it was close to like Sandstorm, like how that and it was instrumental. They were going to play it on daytime radio. But it was it was just weird. And then the one the, the crazy thing was like, I was doing a lot of interviews and everyone was like, oh, so when is the follow-up? And I was in my head, I was like, I don't, I don't have a follow-up ready yet. So um, it was a bit stressful, but it was, it was amazing. And I can't believe it's been 10 years already. And it's still so crazy that, like Sandstorm, it's still played at pretty much every sporting event you go to. They drop it for a song. Yeah. Now, it's of crazy. course, you do shows all over the world. You know, last week you did Malaysia and Singapore. But what's the first thing you like to do on show days? And what's the first thing you do after you're done with your show? Um, when I arrive in like a country um, and I have the day the full day, I and I'm not tired. Um, I like to explore. I like to see the city, meet meet the locals, uh, try local food. Because um, I, I'm I'm very grateful. I get to be at all these incredible places. But sometimes I'm only for a very short time in a certain place. It's all about the show. That's the most important thing. But if I have a little bit time off, I'd like to explore and and uh, be a tourist as well. And then, and then after 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 the show, it's it's crazy. I I've said it in a few interviews, but there's so much adrenaline uh, during a show that even after a show, sometimes I'm shaking, uh, and I can't fall asleep for like a good two three hours uh, after a show, um, which is is crazy. But it's such a it's it's very um, it's very surreal being on stage and like playing songs to a crowd that actually knows the songs. Well, I, I totally understand that because for my radio show, when I get done, my adrenaline is pumped up so high because I do a mix show on Saturday nights. Yeah, you're wired. It's yeah. Like- and there's times after the show where I'll just have to call my mom just because I'm decompressing and my adrenaline is crashing so hard. Yeah, I'm the same. Well, with the holidays coming up, who is the first person you normally text happy holidays to? Um, it's my family group chats, like my sister and my parents, like, uh, we, we're, we're really close and, um, I'm seeing them this week and we're doing, we're doing, uh, every year, as far as I remember, we've spent the holidays together during Christmas. Um, and I'll still do shows, but they join me wherever I am, uh, which is, is super nice. And this year we're going to be in, uh, in Bali. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. Yeah, well, very, very excited. Make sure to tell the family I said hi. <laughs> I will. Now, I will. finally, in Finky's verse, in honor of real love going number one, what is Martin Garrix's first real love? Music. I love it. Not that that's obvious or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Can Let, you tell? <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about this, Smash. How was it born with Loiso? So it was born, um, f- rewind. I'm I'm on YouTube and I find a cover of Loiso doing an Adele cover. And to cover Adele, you need courage. Yeah, you need good absolutely. Voice. It's not like a, it's not like an easy artist to like cover. And I just remember being mind blown. And I stalked the guy. I I, I sent him DMs, 
Twitter, I sent him an email, I sent his management an email, I had my management re- read out, reach out to his label, DMs, everything. Uh, I was like, man, we got to work. But he was in, in South Africa. And this was like, still like a little bit leaving the pandemic. Um, so we couldn't get a visa for him. And I was, I was, and I had this song, the demo for Real Love, written. And I, I, I heard his voice on it. But I, whenever an artist records something, I want to be there. I want to vocal coach. I want to make sure I have all the right takes that, that make me happy. Um, and then we were in New York. I was in New York for, uh, um, I did a, a few shows at Brooklyn Mirage. And I found out he was in New York. And I was like, man, please, please, please come by the studio. Um, and, we, and we ended up recording Real Love, which is, uh, it was cool. When we recorded it, it was just piano. It was like a ballad. It had no no drop, no party, no nothing electronic, nothing dance. Um, but that's how I like to 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 write the songs. I want it to be super powerful melody wise, chord progression wise, vocal wise. Um, I don't I don't want it to rely on production. Um, and once it's like it's solid, then I'll dive into the production process. Well, I've always said that. You know, what what really makes a good dance song is when you can strip away everything and it's still an amazing song. And I mean, Real Love yeah. is such an incredible song. Now, really quickly, did he see your DMs before your management reached out to him or did it just stay on unread? No, no, he, 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 he responded. He responded really quick. Uh, he, he's, he's super, super nice. He's really sweet. It was incredible. I, I saw him last week. We were in L.A., we were actually in the studio together, just playing, trying around new stuff. Doesn't have to be Gary's; could be for his album. Um, we're just having fun, messing around. He's just, he's just a beauty, like good energy. And for me, whenever I connect, I click with someone, like the music goes automatic. I, I could never ever work with someone who I don't feel like I'm on the same frequency uh, or the same mindset. And it definitely helps that he's insanely talented. <laughs> it's, quite, it's, it's, it's kind of scary because we we wrote two more songs. Uh, and the thing is, he's got such a good voice that even if it's a okay melody or an okay lyric, when he sings it, it sounds like a 10 out of 10 lyric, 10 out of 10 melody. So it's it's uh, it's tricky to to work with someone who's, who's got such a powerhouse voice. But um, no, I'm very, I'm very grateful. And it was, it was, the whole process, because we were in New York together, uh, and we had a studio ses- session on, on the Saturday, and he was going to an open mic on Wednesday. Uh, this was in June uh, this year. And um, I was like, F- I don't want to meet him for the first time in the studio. I'm going to surprise him at the op- open mic event. So oh I went there. <laughs> yeah, it was, and he was like, what the f- are you doing here? Sorry. He, was, he was like, what are you doing here? And we ended up having such a fun night, some drinks, uh, running around New York. Um, he ended up singing at the open night. So then going into the studio session on Saturday, it was, it was just, it was like we knew each other already for a long time. The, the whole introduction thing, like we immediately could start off vibing and, 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 and recording real love. That was definitely smart of you because that definitely broke the ice a lot better. Now, yeah, it was fun. something I love to find out about songs is how many different V's there are from when you start working on it, all the tweaking to when you finally master it and put it out. Do you remember what the final V was of Real Love? It was like 48 something. <laughs> it was, yeah. But it's, it's, the worst thing was I spent the full day on uh, on finalizing it. And I, I, was, I thought I was improving the mix and master like crazy. Like I was like, oh, this is sounding so much better than before. Spent the whole day on it. And then I slept. And then morning after I woke up and I listened back to the old version and the version I did the day before. And I was like, oh, the old <laughs> version sounds better. Um, but it's it it happens. And and sometimes sometimes you, you want to overdo things. Uh, you think you're improving. But I think V48 was a good version. <laughs> that was the one. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations on it going number one. It is such an amazing song. What's next Thank for you. you in 2024? Crazy amount of music. Um, I can't describe in words how many songs I have on my computer that are not released yet. No um, crap. <laughs> yeah, but it's 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 exciting. There's there's a lot of I'm experimenting a lot. I'm having a lot of fun in the studio. Um, 
have the I have the follow up for real real love ready, which is which is nice. And then in the, in general, like I take December and January pretty slow, like slow. I still do a, I still do like five shows a month, but it's not as hectic as the summer. Um, so I have a lot of time to be in the studio to work on new material. Um, so I'm, I'm I'm very excited. Well, again. Thank you so much for taking time on your time off. It is always great catching up with you. Martin Garrix, thank you so much for your time on America's Dance 30. Thank you. Good to see you. And thanks so much. I'm very, very grateful, very happy. 